Hey guys, welcome back to Econ Class. Today we are going to be covering cost benefit analysis as well as opportunity cost. So objectives for today, we're going to be able to explain what TINSTOFFEL is, and this is an acronym you're never going to forget. Uh, you're going to be able to understand what cost benefit analysis is. You're going to be able to differentiate between implicit and explicit costs. And then finally, you're going to be able to calculate the opportunity cost of a certain situation. All right, now to the optimizing individual one more time. This is the guy we've been talking about since the beginning of this class. He is the rational decision maker. He is the individual that's out there trying to maximize their utility. He makes marginal decisions where marginal benefit is greater than or equal to marginal cost. Um, and in this video, we're going to learn about how he considers the opportunity cost of a situation and then uses cost benefit analysis to figure out whether or not that decision is worth it or not. Okay, cost benefit analysis. This is something we do on a daily basis. This is something producers and consumers do every day, all the time. Every decision we make, we're looking at the cost and the benefit of the situation. Definition, it's a systematic approach by comparing the cost and benefits of a decision. Um, we, our goal is always to maximize utility and preserve savings. So we're trying to get the best out of something without spending as much as we can. From a consumer point of view, we consider utility to be the benefit. From a producer point of view, we look at the idea of revenue, okay? These are both explaining what the benefit is, consumer's utility, producer's revenue. Now, the concept of voluntary exchange is also very important. This, we're gonna go more in depth on this when we get to international trade, comparative absolute advantage, but it's the idea that we willingly and freely go into a transaction. Every transaction we make, we're both benefiting from it. If I go to the store and buy something, I'm better off. Otherwise, I wouldn't have made that transaction. And the guy that's selling me this stuff, he's better off as well. Even if we're going to the lunchroom to go get a lunch, you hand over that money, the three, four bucks for your lunch in exchange for the food. You do this because you are better off with the food than you are with the money. And they are better off with the money than they are with the food. This is why businesses work is because everybody is part of this voluntary exchange. We go to work in exchange for wages because we're better off with the money. They're better off with our labor and our time. So voluntary exchange is every situation, every transaction that we talk about, it's voluntary because both parties are better off. Now, the idea of opportunity cost, and this is also something that you are very, very familiar with, but opportunity cost in this case is looking at the economic or true cost of a situation. It's everything that is foregone when making a decision. Now, the idea of tin stoffel um, is that there is no such thing as a free lunch. Every transaction that is made, every decision that we make, something has to be sacrificed. Even if you're giving up only your time, you are still spending your time to get that decision. If I invited you to lunch and there was no stipulations involved, it was just you coming to lunch with me, I paid for your transportation, I paid for your meal, is that lunch really free? No, because you had to at least give up your time. You had other things that you could do. Even if the decision was the best one and the most beneficial to you to come to lunch with me, you still gave something else up. You have other people that you could have spent time with, other things that you could have been doing. So there is no such thing as a free lunch, whether it's that situation or you know when we talk about taxpayer dollars, the idea of a free college, you know, uh, the government paying for everybody's free college. It, it is free college for those that get it. But there is only so much money. Scarcity exists everywhere. So if there's only so much government money available to spend, if they're spending it on school, then they have to be taking it from something else. And maybe it's the better decision. I'm not saying that it isn't. But what I am saying is that if they decide to use government money, taxpayer money to pay for free schooling, there is going to be something else that is lost. Maybe you know, some social program that exists today. Maybe it's some government building that will, you know, fall apart, some national park that doesn't get built. They are gonna spend it on one thing instead of the other. All right, so keep these things in mind. Um, opportunity cost is broken down into two separate categories. We've got explicit and implicit cost. Now, both of these together will create our opportunity cost. So, I'm gonna give you an example. I go to the movies. Let's say it's Guardians of the Galaxy. I know it's a few years old, but Still a great movie. Uh, this ticket, $9.75 is what it cost me. That is the explicit cost of my trip to the movie theater. So it's a cost where there is a payment being made. In this case, $9.75. Now the implicit cost is a little different. It's still something that we pay, 
Now let's say that I gotta give up four hours of my time to go see this movie. I could have worked a four hour shift, but instead I decided to go to this movie. Now I'm giving something up. I've decided to go to the movies instead of going to work. In this case, I make eight bucks an hour in this hypothetical situation, but in those $8 an hour, um, it's the cost where there is no payment and the only sacrifice. So I'm not paying out of pocket. I'm not going to my employer and saying, here's $32, but I did lose $32. I could have worked those four hours, eight times four, $32 is my implicit cost in this situation. So explicit is what you pay out of pocket. Implicit is the sacrifice, what you could have done instead. So in this case, my opportunity cost is the total foregone. It is the explicit plus the implicit cost. In this case, it's 41.75. One of the best examples of opportunity cost that helps us understand it is the cost of college. Now in this model right here, the college cost benefit model, we're gonna look at opportunity cost, implicit, explicit, as well as looking at that whole cost benefit analysis. So this model represents our decision to go or not to go to college. It represents everything after high school throughout our entire working career. On the vertical axis, we have the cost benefit of going to college um, in thousands. On the horizontal axis, we have um, years after graduation. So you got four years after graduation, eight, 16, 24, 32. Now we're making a lot of assumptions here. We're you know, generalizing and averaging a lot of things out. So there's gonna be all sorts of different circumstances with your college situation. I'm just kind of showing you the, the cost benefit part of it all. All right, now down on the bottom right there, that blue area, that's our explicit cost of going to college. This is what we are actually paying out of pocket. So this would be our tuition, our books, our room and board, anything that we are paying physically out of pocket, whether it's a loan or, you know, truly out of pocket. So in this case, we're looking at 30,000 a year for that first four years. So it's $120,000 to go to school for four years. Now, most people consider that the only cost of going to college. And in that case, 120,000, it's still fairly expensive to go to school. Remember, all averages here. Now that red area right there, this is the other cost of going to college, which is the implicit cost. The implicit going, cost of going to college is what you lose out on by going to college. Now, college is a great experience and you get a lot from it, hugely beneficial, but we are also giving up that opportunity to work full time in most situations. So in, in a lot of areas, a lot of bigger cities, you could probably find a job right out of high school with just your high school diploma in a warehouse, a factory or something like that, making at least $30,000 a year. It's, it's not bad, it's not great, but it is something that you could be doing. So that $30,000 a year for the first four years is something you're giving up. By going to school, you are foregoing those wages that could be obtained in that situation. Now, the yellow represents, the yellow with the red, represent all the wages earned by the high school graduate. And the green is gonna represent the additional wages that the college graduate could earn. So in this situation, we're looking at the cost benefit of college. The cost is this entire purple region right here. The implicit plus the explicit costs makes up our opportunity cost or the true cost of going to college. It's not just what we pay out of pocket for books, tuition, room, and board. It's what we could have been doing and the money we could have been making. Most people are faced with that decision. You go to work or you go to college. And we do give up those wages. So this opportunity cost is the total cost of going to college, which in this case, in this model, it almost pretty much doubles the cost of going to college. Now, is it still worth it? Even though we're paying explicit and implicit costs, in this model, what we need to consider, the benefit of going to college, the marginal benefit in this situation, the extra benefit of going to college, are those green wages. The extra additional wages you earn by going to school. You could make the yellow, with never going to school, with never going to college. The green, you gotta go to college to get. Now, the green either needs to be greater than or equal to the purple. If the green, the additional wages we're gonna earn by graduating college is greater than or equal to the opportunity cost of going to college, then the decision makes sense. If not, it doesn't. Now, one more thing to add real quick. We're only looking at the financial situation here. There are a lot of other benefits of going to college, the types of jobs you get, and I'm not discouraging anyone from going to school. I'm just pointing out that we make a cost benefit analysis and we have to consider both the implicit and explicit costs or opportunity cost 
of going to college. Now that we've covered opportunity cost, let's take a little time to practice it. In the description below, you can find a link to this PDF, seven questions on opportunity cost. So check that out and then take a look at my next video covering this material. Also, the next big topic that we're gonna to be covering is marginal analysis. So take care guys, thanks for watching, see you next time.